Hi, Joel MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website doomandbloom.net. A question I'm asked often is, can you reuse a face mask? Well, in normal times, the answer is pretty much a resounding no. With a contagious disease, the front of your mask will be contaminated from airborne droplets from infected patients. Now, having said that, it's a hard reality that any prolonged epidemic scenario is going to completely expend your medical supplies. The CDC acknowledges this and says you may have options that won't necessarily put your patient or you at risk. Existing CDC guidelines recommend a combination of approaches to conserve supplies. These existing guidelines for healthcare institutions with few supplies may also pertain to caregivers in epidemic sick rooms at home. One, you should minimize the number of individuals who need to use masks by limiting access to infected patients. Use the N95s on caregivers at highest risk of getting the infection. Two, use alternatives to N95 masks when feasible, like reusable respirators. You can find them at Home Depot or Lowe's. Three, allow extended use or limited reuse of N95s when acceptable. Yes, indeed, the CDC states both extended use and limited reuse have been recommended and widely used as an option for conserving N95s during previous outbreaks and pandemics. As well, they suggest that you can use N95 respirators past their intended shelf life, something I've talked about in the past. Here's what they say, extended use. Extended use alone is unlikely to degrade respiratory protection and may be acceptable as long as patients are infected with the same bug and placed together in the same area or hospital ward. What about reuse? Reuse of the same N95 mask by one healthcare provider may be acceptable for multiple encounters with different patients. CDC states that in N95 shortages, a respirator classified as disposable can generally be reused by the same worker as long as it remains functional. Now, what constitutes functionality? A mask not exposed to aerosol generating medical procedures, such as getting splatter from contaminated blood, respiratory secretions, or other bodily fluids from patients. Functionality can be preserved by the use, by the way, of a cleanable face shield over an N95 respirator and or other steps such as placing surgical masks on COVID-19 patients. N95 and other disposable respirators should not, under any circumstance, be shared by multiple medical workers. Absolute no-no. That's the CDC statements on the reuse of masks. It accepts the premise of reusing masks or using them for extended periods, but it's a little short on details. I also found a post from the International Medical Center in Beijing. It has come under, honestly, considerable criticism, but it's one of the few medical centers willing to test methods of disinfecting otherwise disposable N95 masks. The scientists in Beijing evaluated five different disinfection methods to determine whether they impeded the free circulation of air or damaged the filtering mechanism of the mask. The methods were alcohol spraying disinfection, steamer wet heat disinfection, high temperature, high pressure disinfection, ultraviolet disinfection, and oven dry heat disinfection. Alcohol spraying, well, spraying alcohol on the mask lowered the filtering efficiency of the mask below 95%. Both steamer damp heat methods and high pressure, high temperature sterilization methods also dropped the filtering efficiency of the mask lower than 95%. In addition, the high temperature, high pressure methods, maybe autoclaves, seriously deformed the masks. Ultraviolet disinfection. Now the new coronavirus is indeed sensitive to ultraviolet rays and ultraviolet disinfection does not appear to affect the filtration ability of respirators. The problem is, since we have difficulty observing the inactivation effect of the viruses on mass fibers, it's actually unknown if this method really works. And then there's oven dry heat disinfection. That is, heating at 160 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes had the least effect on damaging the filtering mechanism, and the filtering effect was indeed maintained above 95%. This seems to be the most successful method. I can't tell you this data will stand up to hard scientific scrutiny, so the bottom line is you got to do your own research and you have to make your own conclusions. This is Joe Alton MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're concerned about epidemic disease, please check out Nurse Amy's line of medical kits and personal protection gear at her store at store.doomandbloom.net. 
That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.